Where I'd like to start is at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing about me, James, is when anybody starts off, especially those in authority in the media, they start off with 1971, when I was done for UTMV, which is the unauthorized taking of a motor vehicle. Bear in mind, I didn't learn to drive until I was 23. But I want to take it back a little bit earlier than that. I want to take it back to the 10th of December, 1965. And I'm a six-year-old kid. My mum's had a nervous breakdown. And we've ended up in there. Uh, we've ended up in care. Sorry, not in care. I've got there's five of us. I've got two brothers and two sisters. Yeah, yeah. My th- my three elder siblings. They look white. Me, me, and my sister. Yeah, right. Look mixed race. And they couldn't foster us at that time. So we went to a home called. Menlo Avenue, Wilton Vale Menlo Avenue, Child Assessment Centre. Yeah. Now, I was there in the 60s. In the 80s, it was closed down as part of Operation Care. Yeah. And there was about 29 arrests, 12 people went to prison, yeah, for physical and sexual abuse on children. Now, just to, to give you the background, because I regressed. I forgot all about that childhood, childhood stuff. Yeah, right? When I seen the psychiatrist, yeah, right, after they came out of prison, yeah, right, he told me that I'd had some regressed memories. What brought those memories back to me, James, was February. 2016, I'm on B-Wing, HMP Liverpool, better known as Walton. Yeah, and my friend, an OG called Spencer Benjamin, gets a telephone call from a guy called Eddie Atta. And Eddie Atta tells him, I know that Frenchie raped this girl, and they're going to change him into the next Jimmy Savile which means I'm gonna get all kind of sex charges. Spencer comes and tells me, I go back to me cell and I'm lying there, yeah, right? And then the memories come back to me, yeah, of Wilton Vale. Also I could remember was, it was Wilton and it was a children's home. That's all I could, rem- that's all I could remember, yeah. And there was a Christmas party yeah, and a celebrity came to give us presents. Yeah, and I got a red fire engine with a yellow ladder and a silver bell. And if I listened closely, I could still hear that bell. Yeah. The celebrity that gave me the fire engine, yeah, then attempted to touch me. And I smashed him in the face with this fire engine over his left eye. First man that I ever made bleed. Yeah. And it's in my child files. I brought my child files. I made a subject access request to Liverpool Child Services to get my, my files when I came out of prison. And I made a complaint to Merseyside Police. I've actually got a case number in, in Operation U Tree. Right, because when the police investigated it, they found I was at that home for 10 days. And in that 10 day period, Jimmy Savile was there. Yeah, and when he was there, I smashed him in the face. So what happened? Why didn't I mention this in my book? Why did I wait till I came out of prison? The memories were regressed. It was only when I went into prison and got told that I would get, be getting turned into Jimmy Savile, that it triggered 
the trauma that I was going through at the time triggered the old trauma and it and the memories came back. Yeah. It's also in my files that I told the professionals in the service what had happened and what I'd do. And I was called a dirty little lying black bastard. Yeah. And I was carted off to a home in Speak. I was given to a couple of uh, 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 foster parents in Speak. He was in a wheelchair, yeah, paraplegic, yeah, right. And his wife, his wife was okay. And he had his car modified where he had a thing on a steering wheel so we could turn it. Their kick was to tie me over the Welsh, well, a Welsh dresser. Yeah, hands over the dresser, ankles over the dresser, and whip me with curtain wire to get me to be quiet about what was going on. Now, in the children's homes, yeah, and I like to make it clear, because in, in the equity say, I said that I was sexually abused. I wasn't sexually abused, I was physically abused. Yeah, right? And those that tried to sexually abuse me, yeah, it's the first one that I ever made bleed was Jimmy Savile. Now, when I, when I broke the story in the Liverpool Daily Post and Echo, when I came out of prison and I went to the police, yeah, right, right, for historic stuff, because I decided, James, yeah, right, in prison, that when I came out, I was going to take all these services on. Merseyside Police Services, Mason Cheshire Crown Prosecution Services, Liverpool Social Services, the probation services and the prison services, because each and every one of them, yeah, right, abused me. But what I decided I was going to do, I was going to use the own rules, regulations, guidelines, protocols and principles, and I was going to beat them with their own stick. And I outlined this all in a 33-page document called Institutional Racism and Malf Misfeasance on Merseyside. So now, this is, I've gone into this ch children's home, yeah, 10th of December, and they've moved me on the 23rd. Everywhere's closed down, nobody does anything. They've moved me on the 23rd because of the incident. Then I'm on a, a care medical round until I'm 11, yeah? I went in as a six year old altar boy, yeah? I came out as a very angry young man, yeah, right? And they were the origins of, of where my violence comes from. Now, I've sought, I've sought professional help since I've come, out, come, come back. And I see a psychiatrist, I pay to see a psychiatrist once a week. Yeah, yeah, to help me work through these issues, yeah, right, of, of why I, um, I suffer from homicidal ideation. I'm always thinking about killing people. 